This is the Galaxy Z Fold 6, and yes, we do say Z in this country, and I've realized something. This isn't gonna be an in-depth review of the Galaxy Z Fold 6 because there's loads of those out there already. I am a little bit late to the party, to be fair, but the reason for that is I wanted to use it for a bit before giving you my full thoughts on it. And equally, I'm coming at this from a slightly different angle because I switched from the iPhone to the S24 Ultra a few months ago, and now I've switched from the S24 Ultra to the Z Fold 6. So I'm coming at this as a recent Samsung convert. I am basically a Samsung person now. I used to be an iPhone person, and I am a massive Apple sheep. I use my Mac, I use my iPad, I used to use the Apple Watch. Basically, I love Apple stuff, and I do still have a big, very big place in my heart for the iPhone. I do miss it. So this really has to win my affections. And if you're wondering, yes, I will be reviewing the Z Flip 6 as well, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell not to miss that video. But let's get into this after this week's sponsor. And this video is sponsored by Banks. We've got two different cases here and a couple of other accessories for the Z Fold 6. The first one is the Aurora Armor Air case, which is quite hard to say, but it's a very, very nice case. It slips on very easily, as you can see, and it's made with 600D Kevlar fiber. It's got this minimalist, sleek design. It's 0.7 millimeters thin, and it's very, very lightweight. Like all Banks cases, it feels very smooth in the hand, and it has raised lens protection. And I think it looks really nice on the Z Fold 6. It adds this kind of very nice, sophisticated look and feel. Then we have the Montage Armor Air case, and this one, once again, slips on very easily and it protects that hinge. The montage is made from a blend of 600D and 1500D Kevlar fiber. It's also 0.7 millimeters thin, it's lightweight, and once again, it feels very smooth in the hand. Like all Banks cases, it's got that very comfortable grip. I love these Banks cases. They are very, very light, they look fantastic, and they make this phone just a little bit less worrying to carry around. Because as you'll find out in a moment, it is very expensive. But thankfully, these cases aren't. Now, neither of these cases go onto the front of the Fold 6, but that's actually a good thing. I've had cases that do that on Folds, and they just don't work. They're usually incompatible with screen protectors, they can reduce the viewing area, and they keep falling off. These Banks cases offer just enough protection. But if you're worried about that front screen, the good thing is, is that Banks has a screen protector, which I've put on here, very, very easy to apply and it gives you that peace of mind and it doesn't dull the colors. It looks fantastic still. It feels great. That is an absolute no-brainer for the Fold 6. And if you're worried about those three lenses on the back, Banks also offers lens protectors, which are very easy to put on and once again, offer you loads of peace of mind. Thanks once again to Banks for sponsoring this video. And if you want to check out those products, just go and click those links in the description. Right, let's run through the specs of the Z Fold 6 just to see how far we've come from the Z Fold 5. So it has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. That's very important. It's not a regular Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. They've designed it specifically for Samsung. It comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM. It weighs 14 grams less than the Fold 5. The cover display is one millimeter wider. The internal display is 2.7 millimeters wider and the bezels are smaller as is the hinge. It's also thinner overall than the Fold 5 and it has a brighter display at 2,600 nits. The Fold 5 was a mere 1,750 nits. It comes in silver shadow, pink, navy, black and white and black and white are the two online exclusive colours. I went for the white one obviously. This is my phone by the way. This hasn't been sent to me for review. I have committed to this by spending quite a lot of money. It's got the same size battery as the Fold 5 but it promises two extra hours of video playback and there's a slightly tweaked camera system although it still has the 50 50 megapixel main camera. In terms of pricing, the 256 gigabyte version, which is this one here, is £1,799. The 512 gig version is £1,899. And the one terabyte version is £2,099. So it still isn't a cheap phone at all. But what do I think about it having used this as my main device for the last few days? The first thing is the crease because I know a lot of people hate creases on foldable phones. That's the one thing that stops them from buying them because they just can't understand how you could ever deal with that. It doesn't bother me. It's there if you look for it on any fold, any flip, any kind of phone that the display folds because it's going to be there. It's At the moment, the technology is not there to get rid of that crease entirely. However, the Fold 6, it's definitely less 
visible. It does pick up a lot of fingerprints, of course it does. Uh, but yeah, you can see it there with my massive key light in front of me. So that's the Fold 6. The Fold 5, it's very hard to judge that really, to be fair. It's definitely less visible, trust me, in normal everyday use where you're not sitting with a huge key light in front of you. I just don't notice it as much. If you run your finger across it, you're gonna feel it. But again, it's definitely less. It also opens flatter. It's definitely a flatter opening phone, which again, this doesn't really bother me. The Z series, the Z Fold series has always been for me, the one of the flattest opening phones that fold apart from Honor's Magic V2, that's very flat. But the, for instance, the Pixel Fold, there's still a bit of a, a V there. And once again, I know that bothers people doesn't really bother me. Basically, it, it reveals that Samsung is quite far ahead in the R&D department when it comes to foldable phones. They've been doing this for a long time and a lot of the design of the Z Fold 6, it just proves that. The camera system, is good. So it, it takes beautiful photos. I'll, I'll show you some of the photos I've taken with it recently now. The, the photos that come out of the Z Fold 6 are lovely. I, I think the colors are great. It does have a bit of Samsung oversaturatedness going on, but not too much. And at both the wide angle and the regular zoom, it's like I say, lovely. I've got no problem with these images whatsoever. The problem is that I've got so used to 5X that the optical 5X zoom that you get on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the S24 Ultra for a content creator, like me who's using his phone a lot for video for you know, taking photos of products and things it needs to be really good and the problem with the Z Fold 6 just like the Z Fold 5 is that the camera system isn't flagship worthy because it's missing that 5x or even a 10x basically a zoom that you can really rely on you can get to 5x and 10x on this but it's not very good i don't know why samsung didn't put the s24 ultra camera system on here as a result of that i'm probably going to have to carry around two phones which i didn't want to do i, I want to be a one phone person like i've been for the, for the last few months but it's not good enough for that unfortunately which is a shame because the, the regular cameras on here take lovely photos Back Battery life is not as good as the S24 Ultra. I know some of my contemporaries have had problems with the S24 Ultra's battery. I haven't, it's been absolutely amazing. Two days easily. This is not a two day phone. It's a day and a little bit, basically. That's what you'll get out of it, but I don't trust it for that. Once again, I've become so used to the flagship levels of battery life on the iPhone and the S24 Ultra that I am missing it on this. Just very quickly on the display front, they are fantastic. The internal display and the the front cover display are much brighter and it makes a big difference. They're much brighter than the Fold 5 and when it's very bright and sunny outside, which occasionally this year it is in the UK, you do notice it. I did find that the Fold 5 and the folds before it were a little bit, little bit restrictive in really harsh sunlight. That isn't the case with this. And while we're talking about the displays, the thing that I referenced at the start of this video that I've learned is the fact that Actually, the cover display isn't that bad at all. I was one of the people who said it's too narrow, you can't do anything on it. I think I, I even genuinely said it's practically useless on the Fold 5. That was a little bit unfair. That is the Fold 5 and that is the Fold 6. It's one millimeter wider, which is very, very tiny. They have made the bezels slightly smaller. Once again, you can hopefully see that. And that has had an impact, but I think I've been missing the point. And that point is this is the first phone for a long time that I can use one-handed. So if you've got something else in your other hand, please stop laughing at the back. If you're walking your dog, for instance, or if you are doing something parent Related. Parents will get this. If you're doing something where you only have one hand to hand with a great big phone, I haven't got it here, but you know, the S24 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's very, very difficult to text one handed or do things one handed. This is brilliant for those scenarios. And once again, because the cover screen is a bit restrictive, it does force you to do that quite a bit and use this massive canvas. And that's the other thing that I'm really enjoying about the Fold 6. This internal display is brilliant for productivity, you know, for, for emailing, for working in Notion, you know, planning the content in this business, for social media stuff, for browsing the web. I really like it. This, I liked it before, but for some reason, I'm finding it even more useful now. And this is where Samsung often shines above other manufacturers in the foldable space because the operating system is built for this big display. That isn't always the case on other foldable phones. The keyboard is a joy to use. I have no issues with that whatsoever. And they've nailed the aspect ratio. It's just right. One thing that isn't right and is quite annoying is the fact that if I take that case off, because it's narrow and because of that big camera bump, it wobbles 
horrendously on tables and it's really annoying because if you put that next to your laptop for instance and you're typing away and you want to do something on here oh it's so irritating but that's a minor quibble and to be honest most of my moans about the fold six are very specific to my use cases and they're not deal breakers i'm not looking at these things thinking i can't use this phone okay the camera system is a bit of a, a bit of a problem but i'm in a position where i can solve that with a second phone everything else I can live with. What I do like about it though is that overall it looks and feels like a very expensive device and it should because it's incredibly expensive. It's just a lovely looking thing and it does draw attention which isn't always the best thing but people do comment on it and that makes you feel a bit better for spending nigh on £2,000 on a telephone. But what about Galaxy AI? Samsung has taken the Galaxy AI stuff from the S24 series and ported it over, for want of a better phrase, to the Fold 6 and the Flip 6. But what they've done is make use of the fact that you can do things like that and the fact that you have this massive internal display. That was the right thing to do and it's all very clever, very smart and there's normally something in there I think that you'll find that works for you. You won't use all of those features but there'll be something, you know, the circle to search, the ability to draw a crown on your head and have it kind of you know, appear better than your drawing, the translation stuff, the you know, the assistance with notes and summarizing web pages, all that, all that business. I'm just not convinced that the AI stuff built into modern smartphones, and it isn't just Samsung, every other manufacturer is doing this. I don't think that anyone is as passionate and bothered about it as the manufacturers. I think the general user base doesn't pay much attention to these AI features. Now this isn't a bad thing, and like I mentioned a moment ago, it's a race between the manufacturers. They they feel clearly like they have to do this and jump on this AI bandwagon. It's all incredibly useful occasionally, but nothing beats the, the regular features of a smartphone. You know, is it well priced given what you get from it? Is the camera system good? Is it fast? Is the display good? Can, you know, can I see the display in very bright sunlight? I still think those things trump the Galaxy AI and all the other AI stuff that's out there. But let me know what you think down below. Now it's for my conclusion for the time being about the Galaxy Z Fold 6. If you have the Z Fold 5, it's not worth upgrading to the Z Fold 6. It just isn't. It's more of a refinement, really. I, I, I prefer the way this phone looks. The crease is slightly less visible. It's got better... What else has it got? Hasn't got a better camera system, really. That's the one problem. It still wobbles on the table. The front cover display, I think I've been wrong about that, possibly. And it is slightly bigger. It's one of the best folds on the market, but equally, I can understand why people people are getting a little bit frustrated with the lack of innovation, with, you know, with it not getting bigger, wider, etc. However, the one thing I would say about that is if you can guarantee if Samsung made this front display wider, people would complain. You can't really win in this game as a manufacturer, but for me, this is a phone that I'm going to stick with for as long as I think I need to. And that, and that could be quite a while because I am a Samsung person now. And as much as I'm going to dive into the iPhone 16 later this year, and that will definitely become my production phone for video and photography and all that sort of stuff, I don't want to give up this massive canvas. Remember, my Flip 6 and Galaxy Watch Ultra reviews are coming very soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell not to miss those ones. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, please, because that makes a massive difference to this channel. And if you've still got some time, hang around for another video that I think you'll find very interesting.